Mike Pacelli here, coming to you from my studio in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, greetings and welcome in. Uh, for this lesson, I'll be talking about the genius of John Lennon's guitar. Now, the Beatles had some great guitar players. I mean, George Harrison did amazing things. Paul McCartney played some of the greatest leads on the uh, Beatles records. Uh, but John Lennon, I think, sometimes is overlooked at how great his guitar playing was. I think he was one of the quintessential rock rhythm players there ever was. And even from the, uh, from the first time that America got to see the Beatles, would have been um, February 9th, 1964 on the Ed Sullivan Show, Paul McCartney had the spotlight because he's singing uh, All My Loving, but there's this amazing guitar part going on, and it's John Lennon on rhythm doing a triplets rhythm thing through, through most of the song. And it's uh, very catchy, not that easy to do, and just extremely effective. So what John was doing on that song was uh, he was playing a triplet uh, uh, pattern over and over. And in case you don't know, triplets are just, if this is the beat, it's one ta-ta, two ta-ta, three ta-ta, four ta-ta. That's how you count a triplet. So John was playing a part like this. Now, of note is that, first of all, he kind of plays banjo chords, usually four note chords. Like when he plays the D chord, he uses his pinky to get the F sharp on fret four of the fourth string. Hard for me. Same thing when he goes up to the E. So the chords to this All My Loving is a F sharp minor, B, E, C sharp minor, A, F sharp minor, D, B, right, those are the basic chords. Now, in order to get that triplet feel when you first learn it, it's probably good to think down, up, down, down, up, down. So like down, up, down, down, up, down, change chords. Down, up, down, down, change chords. But John isn't going down, up, down, down, up, down. It's all up and down. So he's going Changing chords. Changing chords. Now, you can also, it's a little hard to do to keep it perfectly smooth. You can also think of it as one ta ta, two ta ta, three ta ta, four, and make the change. So. Right? All with down and up, though. So going through the changes, it would be. Faster, actually, it's probably around uh, 156 beats, so it's probably like. And when you watch the video, it's, um, you can find it on YouTube, he's just smiling like it's nothing, but it's actually quite challenging. Uh, it's probably the only time I would use like a, a medium pick, probably what he used. So brilliant. Again, when you first try to get that triplet feel, go down, up, down, just to get the feel of it. And then just try to do it all with down, down, up, so. Stay on one chord, maybe. Isn't that great? I love that. 
And then the next time, um, and again, remember the banjo chords if you want to do it authentically. Play like your D and use your pinky to get a D and to get the E. First time uh, I think I ever saw anything like that was John Lennon. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks later, February 16th, they're on the Ed Sullivan Show, and they're doing this boy, and once again, John Lennon is playing triplets. But instead of um, uh, eighth note triplets, you know, one ta ta two ta ta he's using a figure with 16th note triplets. When you, when you count that, it's, uh, you count T-T-T, and, and the rhythm is one T-T-T, two uh, ta ta eighth note triplet, second measure, then three T-T-T, four ta ta and the song is this boy, and it's, uh, uh, let's see. Again, with the triple things. And on the early things when he's rocking, uh, he pretty much is like a Chuck Berry kind of kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, just where he's basically a. Uh, a power chord, which would be like if you play G power chord, um, you know, root and, and fifth, using the six with your pinky. Now, what I love about that, if you listen to the recording, Instead of that B7 being a bar chord, I hear John playing it down here. Three note, again, like a banjo chord. You know, root, third, seventh for the B7. And he does that a lot. Instead of playing a full bar chord, he'll play three notes like, or down here. Listen to the record, you hear what I mean? You know, you know. Oh, yeah. Later on, when you hear, uh, listen to a lot of rockin' songs, if he's rockin', instead of saying, staying just like, um, you know, like say we're a D chord, D power chord, Chuck Berry style. Of course, he'll get the seventh, you know, like. But what I love about John's rhythm playing is that he'll break uh, the pattern. Instead of going like, okay, we'll call this to the sixth. That's the sixth to so the seventh. So if he does six to seventh the first time, he'll do seven six next time, like this. Right, breaking the pattern, which is which is real playful and creative, almost kind of like a kind of jazz uh, improvisational, but it has a bit of humor in when you do it too. Breaking the pattern, so that's something to remember. All right, then, uh, so later on, you know, they get into I Feel Fine. Now, I Feel Fine, you know, what a brilliant thing. It uses a uh, rock ninth and a major second, right, in the, in the melody. So I think it's in the key of G, right? Uh, remember, remember I Feel Fine? Let me do that again. So now we're using, you know, a, a, a suspension of a D chord. He's grabbing the ninth with his pinky. And he's getting it, which is a major second. Right? Taking it down to the C, same form. And down to G. I read somewhere that he was so impressed and were like that so much that he wanted to use that basic lick in every song that they were doing at the time for that album. But it's so inventive. It's just so beautifully inventive to, uh, you know, to use the suspension, to use the ninth, and to have a minor second, a major second sound. Okay. That's just genius. Okay. 
just just wonderful. All right, let's see what else. Okay, um, she's a woman. Now, depending on how you count it, it's either starting on two and four. So it's it sounds like when you first heard the song, like the rhythm is starting on on one, but it's not. It's if you count it slow, it would be one. Or if you count half of that, it's like up. Uh, it's like on the upbeat. One. Right. It's a brilliant use because you first hear it and it sounds like that might be one, like the rhythm guitar is playing one, like he's going one, two, three, four. But it's actually one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, or if you counted half of that, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Again, just just pure rock and roll genius. That, that's what that is. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, I'm gonna talk about. You can't do that. Now this is another riff that John John wrote, and again this time instead of using the major second. He works a minor second into a, a rock and roll song, and, and it goes. Right? He's got a B flat and a B and a rock lick. Now he wrote the lick. He let George uh, play it on the record. Or, uh, George plays it on the record, but because uh, John's actually singing. Uh, while he's recording that rhythm part. So the rhythm part is so inventive too. It's, uh, it's kind of like, let's see, it'd be like one, two. <laughs> so much syncopation, right? Like one, two, rest. Do a quarter note, a rest and, 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 and four and right. inventive and it goes perfectly with the lyric. So something to think about when you're writing songs, you know, make sure you're just not playing exactly what you're singing, but try to, like John Lennon did, make the rhythm add to it, you know, and give extra little punches and be spontaneous. Uh, I guess his most famous lick that, uh, probably one of the most famous, you know, guitar licks of all time is in Day Tripper, you know, and it's part of the, uh, you know, the two measure uh, guitar lick kind of riff thing that the Beatles did a lot, like in the like Ticket to Ride, Paperback Rider, and uh, I guess If I Needed Someone has that too. But you know, of course you know the lick. Fantastic lick, right? <laughs> That's just so inventive and so perfect. You know, it's taking a, 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 like an E, making it bluesy. <laughs> Staying true to the blues by going to the four chord. And one of the most you know recognizable licks that, that ever was, and that's thanks again to John Lennon's genius on the guitar. And then you know again George plays it, uh, John wrote it, and then John just plays simple chords uh, in the background of it. For the record, let's see. Uh, oh, um, paperback? No, not paperback. Norwegian Wood. I want to talk about. I need to get a capo, so watch this dissolve to black. And I'm back with a capo, the miracles of modern day science and editing. <laughs> so in Norwegian Wood, uh, John is now pretty much mirroring what he's going to sing, but it's so haunting and, and perfectly beautiful based on a D chord. <laughs> uses 
that so beautiful? Taking the A up to the B. Grabbing the F sharp with his pinky. C chord. It's just amazing. Uh, that that basic, you know, thinking about how to play rhythm guitar around a song is something we all should e try and emulate best we can. All right, now Sergeant Pepper's. You know, I want to talk about Sergeant Pepper a little bit. Again, he, he goes back to his banjo chords and he starts using the uh, he's using the uh, three note. And the song starts with starts in A. down here at the G7. Don't you love that? Those three three notes just like on the uh, uh, sixth string, fifth, and the uh, fourth fret. Three, two, and three. So you got the root seven, I'm sorry, the root third and the seventh for the G7. Such a dirty sounding chord and great, right? Something I like to do with that chord that you can use, if you're doing this chord, with your first finger, get the B flat. Isn't that great? So I'm just taking that three note chord and I'm slurring into the, uh, the, uh, the major second from a minor second. Almost sounds like you can't do that. But those those dirty chords in Sgt. Pepper's. As soon as you hear that, you know it's Sgt. Pepper. And something, if you really listen to the record, uh, when Paul's singing, May I introduce to you? Right? John plays this line. That's on an A chord. He goes. So you're playing the A, just A bar. And then grab the, uh, we're on the D string, five, four, three. And then uh, an A note, second fret. I love that. Those kind of little things are so thick that you can make a whole song out of just that riff, right? I, used, I like that too, and, and something that the Beatles was always like, you know, the, the, uh, the flat nine. You can go... Right? Doesn't that sound Beatles? Or, see I'm doing the same thing like on an A. Going from uh, uh, the D string five four two, and then G string three two. Right. On on Sergeant Pepper's it's. Something like that. Just great, great stuff. Since we're in A, how about in back in the USSR, right? Um, you know, the, the basic rhythm is... Just Chuck Berry. But John plays kind of a... Uh, kind of a counter rhythm to that. He is, and, and, and once again, it almost has a little humor in it. He's like... He's like... Great on top of you got one straight part. You got John. Can't you see him in the studio kind of being a little playful actually and, and doing that because it's kind of playful? I love that. 
And what else? Let's see. Oh, how about in Revolution, right? You're in B, and he's kind of, instead of playing the straight eighth, he's like rolling his eighth notes. Like. Right? Chuck Berry kind of rock and roll again. this chord C sharp minor with a G sharp bass. Right, instead of going put the G sharp on the bass. Play it again. I could go on and on and on and on with great little examples of that, but I, I hope that opens your ears a little bit to uh, why I feel John Lennon is such a genius. And if you'd like to drop me a note, please do so at MikePacelli.com. It's always cool uh, to hear from you. I'll answer every email. Or if you have a suggestion for a lesson, please let me know. All right, good hanging out with you, and please check out some of my other lessons right here.